Welcome back to our series on 70 volt speakers. In part one, we talked about how transformers work with 70 volt speaker systems. Today, we're going to continue that discussion with a few best practices that'll help you achieve your goals for a given space. To reach our sound goals for a given space, we must decide how many loudspeakers are needed and what wattage tap to use. Let's start with how many loudspeakers you'll need. Figuring this out helps us to avoid mistakes when choosing the size of amplifier you need to use. How do you decide the right number of speakers? Well, there are several factors to consider. The application, that is the SPL needs of the space, the ceiling to listener distance, size of the space, and of course the speaker itself. We also want to keep in mind what the space is going to be used for. You want to be sure to consider the total acoustic environment as you begin the project. Will music be playing in the background, requiring less sound, or is it a noisy room with foreground music? If so, you'll need more sound from the speakers. If it's a quiet room in a critical listening application, you want each word to be clear and discernible, so you might need more speakers arranged closer together. Also consider whether listeners will be seated or standing. For our exercise, we'll use a critical listening environment since it's the most challenging. Critical listening environments need very good coverage in the voice range. It's still a good idea to consider having some low end frequency response. A word of caution here, speech gets muddy when there's too much low end. Mid to high frequency sounds are where the voice intelligibility is found. Hard consonants are what we need to hear to understand speech, and this will affect your speaker choice and how many speakers you'll need. Why? Speakers distribute sound differently at each frequency. While low frequency sounds are almost omnidirectional, the higher the frequency, the more narrow the coverage is. The goal here at Audio Acoustics for critical listening environments has always been no more than a 3 dB difference anywhere in the room in the critical frequency range. Every seat and listening area becomes a good seat this way. That means we must use more speakers here than a system to play background music would need. Take a look at the following diagram for our guide to general spacing dimensions. As you can see, for 8-inch utility speakers, we want about 10 feet of space between them and about 5 feet to 6 feet of space between the speaker and the wall. For 4-inch premium speaker systems, you can space them 14 feet between speakers and 7 to 8 feet between speaker and wall. So where do you start your first row of speakers? It's usually best not to allow bleed over from the audience speakers onto your stage area. This will help with feedback control. I usually start about 10 feet over the stage edge or directly over the first row of seats. I tap this row at half the wattage of other speakers in the audience area. This also helps control feedback. Speakers may disperse sound over a large area than our distance is seen to show here, but it's good to remember that inverse square law still applies. Every time the distance doubles, you lose 6 dB. Specs show one speaker will deliver a pretty consistent sound for about 90 degrees, but as you move away from under the speaker, the distance from the speaker to the listener increases. As that happens, less sound is heard by those listening off axis. So, to maintain our desired spec of 3 dB loss or less, we have to add speakers. Now let's take a look at the transformer. In a constant voltage speaker system, transformers are used to maintain a correct impedance to the amplifier, despite putting many speakers on the speaker line. Most transformers give you several choices in how much power you allow to pass through to the voice coil of the speakers. Looking at your spec sheet will help determine the right tap to use on the transformer. For example, we'll use a spec sheet for the Lowell 810T72 speaker. This is a general use utility speaker. You'll notice many taps are available. Looking at the spec sheet, we see it says at 1000 Hz, this speaker will deliver about 90 dB using 1 watt when measured at 1 meter from the speaker. Our listeners will be about 2 meters from the speaker, so that 1 watt of power will deliver 84 dB of sound at 1K. 
This will probably not be enough, taking into account that one watt will be delivered to the voice coil only when the speaker line is energized with a full 70 volts. A full 70 volts is usually not achieved in 70 volt speaker applications in smaller rooms. Planning for more power to pass allows for headroom for any music program that might also play on occasion. So I would tap these speakers at at least 2 watts, giving me about 87 dB at listener level. Of course, actual level delivered will be controlled by the mixer operator, but this way there's no bottleneck at the speaker. Other speakers have a dial tap that gives the most flexibility in making changes after the install. Let's take a look at one popular speaker system. There's a simple hookup here on the back, then a small dial located behind the grill makes for a great way to ensure that you can make changes to the tap setting if one area needs adjusting. Remember, in critical listening areas, the right number of speakers is not determined by the size of amplifier you'd like to use. It is determined by the specs of the speaker you'll be using and the purpose of the listening audience. Be sure to subscribe to our Pro Audio Superstore channel and keep up with all of our tips, tricks, and advice in the world of Pro Audio sound systems. And we love hearing from you, so be sure and leave us any feedback or questions in the comments section. See you next time.